Hello everyone, and welcome to Griffin TV, broadcasting the latest information to the Canisius College community. Good evening, I'm David Goodwin. We here at Griffin TV hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving break, and we hope that you are just as excited to be back as we are. Today, we'll be talking to the director of Widow Theater's upcoming play. But first, we'll be taking a look at Aid Aha, a special event held on campus. Griffin TV's reporter Wahab Al Dayel has more. We have here uh, Mr. Sherry, who is a student at Kinesis College. I see there is like an event going on in here. What can you tell us about it? Uh, yes, actually, this event is um, more about Muslims' culture. It's one of uh, Muslims' holiday, uh, and it's called Al Adha holiday. Um, so we like um, Kinesis community to share with us this celebration and we are so glad uh, for them to be with us. Doctor, what do you think about this evening? I think this is the most wonderful evening to celebrate the end of the Feast of Sacrifice from October 25-26. And I feel very, very honored to have so many you know, wonderful Arabic students from Saudi Arabia on campus. And I've very much been looking forward to this evening for several weeks now. Uh, what a great thing. Uh, it's an uh, Arabic club, but I see like people from different countries and from different cultures. Yeah, this is correct, actually. Um, and at the same time, it wasn't expected because um, when we um, started thinking about um, this event, uh, we didn't think that all these people would come. What do you think? Good, great food, um, good people, nice talk to them. And yeah. <laughs> what do you think? A lot of people showed up, great event, but everyone did a great job and everyone else that helped. What do you think about this event? Um, I thought it was really fun. The food was really good and I had a nice time. Yeah, I liked it and I got my name spelled in Arabic. Uh, really? Yeah, that was really cool. I, I didn't realize that it was actually like spelled from right to left. That was cool. Mr. Shiri, can you tell us who sponsored this event? Uh, yes, actually this event is sponsored by Oasis Club, uh, which is basically um, the Arabic club here at uh, Kinesius. Yeah, and I see like more of activities are going on in here. And there is uh, like, I smell the Arabic coffee at like, when we entered this room, we smell the Arabic coffee and we see like girls doing something on their hands. What can you tell us about it? Yes, uh, actually uh, there are many activities uh, besides the, um, the dinner, which is, um, basically uh, traditional Arabic food. Um, there is Arabic coffee with dates, um, which is the traditional coffee in Saudi Arabia and with with some dates from there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Abdullah Shahri. I wish you uh, best luck in the future. Uh, this was uh, Mohsin Ibrahim talking to you from Saudi event, Agriven TV. Thank you. It looked like it was a great time had by all. I'm sitting here now with Matt Gian Greco, the director of Widow Theater's next production, The Odd Couple. Welcome, Matt. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. So what is your history with Widow Theater? Have you been involved in many uh, productions before? I personally have been involved in theater for about six years, almost seven. Mm -hmm. um, I transferred to Canisius last year, and uh, obviously Little Theater was something that I gravitated towards almost immediately. Mm -hmm. um, I was involved in all the productions last year. Um, 
and uh, I was also in Macbeth this year, our first production, and I'm directing our current production, The Odd Couple. Is this your first directing experience? This is my first directing experience. Um, I'm used to being in production, so this is kind of a, a new novel experience for mm -hmm. me. But uh, it's gone pretty well, I can't complain. That's good. Uh, what is The Odd Couple about? The Odd Couple is about uh, Oscar Madison. He is a, uh, a, a divorced man living in New York in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. um, his best friend Felix uh, has his wife leave him, so he's also going through a divorce. And uh, he's kicked out of his house, so he moves in with Oscar. Um, the problem is that the two are very different in their personalities. Oscar is very easygoing and laid back and kind of a slob. Uh, and Felix is very neat and fastidious and uh, type A type personality. So there's lots of personality clashes. Um, and it's a really hilarious show. Can you kind of take us through the process of how you got the idea to direct and what you have been doing since? Um, I was involved in a production of The Odd Couple in high school. Mm -hmm. um, a little theater does four productions every year, two of which are student directed. Um, so in order to direct a show, you propose it to the club to mm -hmm. uh, direct. Um, so The Odd Couple was kind of an obvious choice for me when I decided to direct. Um, in order to prepare for a show once it's chosen, we conduct our own auditions for a second stage, which is the student directed show. We the Every phase of production is student run, from auditions all the way through to production. Um, so I, we held auditions, uh, cast the show, um, did, conducted all the rehearsals ourselves, did all the scheduling. Uh, we build all of our own sets. Um, we gather our own costumes, makeup, lights, sound. Everything is done by students, um, down to every last bit. So sounds great. Yeah. Why do you think students should come to The Odd Couple? Well, first of all, it's a hilarious show. It's, it's very entertaining, I think, uh, which is one of the reasons I chose it, especially after our first production of Macbeth, which is very kind of bloody and dark. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to lighten it up a little bit with this one. So it's, it's definitely a good note to, I think, end the semester on. Mm -hmm. uh, what else can we expect from Whittle Theater throughout the rest of the year? Uh, our next production in the spring will be uh, Oscar Wilde's The Importance of Being Earnest, mm -hmm. which is uh, kind of taking it back a little bit in theater history. Um, an English drama, or not drama, comedy, but uh, another very funny show. So we're excited for that one. And then uh, later in the spring, we have the musical 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, which is very popular, very, uh, again, a very funny show. So we're excited for that too. Cool. And if someone was interested in joining Whittle Theater, what steps should they do to? Um, really, you can show up to auditions uh, whenever they're held. We usually try to get the word out to the population. Uh, with flyers and announcements and emails and what have you for that. Um, definitely send us an email at ltclub uh, at kanisha.edu. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really not hard. We take everyone. We, we can always use more people for production roles or to be cast in our shows. So if you're interested, by all means, come on down. And the show is which date? It opens on Thursday at uh, 8 o'clock in the Marie Midday Theater in Lyons Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, and it also runs on Friday at the same time and then uh, Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock. Sounds great. Thanks, Matt. We're going to be back with some more news and sports, but first we're going to take a quick commercial break. Be, be the charming type. Take off your gloves and show what they hide. I'll let you cry if you close your eyes. Welcome back. We now turn things over to Kyle Ferrara and Brandon Rudd for an update on our sports teams. Over to you, Kyle and Brandon. Thanks, Dave. Our own Mary Kessler had an exclusive interview with head hockey coach Dave Smith. But before we get into that, let's recap everything that occurred in the world of sports since our last broadcast. We'll start things off with men's basketball. Brandon, what can you tell us about that? Well, the men's basketball team is off to a 3-1 start, highlighted by a come-from-behind 72-69 win at the CAC against Big Four rival St. Bonaventure. He lost their most recent game against Stony Brook, 75-82. That game featured the return of Freddie Adams' two rebounds in 22 minutes. This is the Griff's best start since the 2000-2001 season, and on the year so far, they are led by guards Harold Washington and Billy Barron, who are averaging over 17 points a game, 
along with center Jordan Heath, who's averaging just under 10 points to go along with six rebounds. Meanwhile, on the women's basketball team, off to a slower start in one and three. They start off the season right with a 73-57 home win against UB behind a record-same debut from a freshman forward, Crystal Porter. She had 10 points, eight rebounds, six assists, three blocks, but had lost their... They fell in their most recent game, 52-51, against Oakland University at home. They were led in that game by senior Ashley Wilkes' double-double of 11 points and 11 rebounds, but ultimately fell short when sophomore guard Brooke Angelos missed a pull-up jumper from the free-throw line as time expired. The volleyball season ended back in November the 17th as the Griffins fell to Siena three sets to one in the first round of the MAC championships. The Grizz fans were an overall record of 16 wins and 13 losses, and an amazing record of 13 wins and five losses in the MAC. In that match against Siena, seniors Samantha Good and Logan Salonga contributed 12 and 9 kills respectively, and senior libero Ali Severn recorded a match high 31 digs in the girls' final game as a Griffin. Severn also broke her own program's single season record with 634 digs. On that same day, the women's swimming and diving team also fell to Siena 134 to 109. Sophomore Marissa Oakley first in the 1,000 yard freestyle with a time of 10 minutes and 28.78 seconds. She also placed first in the 500 yard freestyle with a time of 5 minutes and 9.76 seconds. Also capturing first place finishes was freshman Claire Battaglia. She would finish first in the both the 200 yard individual medley and a 200 yard backstroke. We teased our interview with head coach Dave Smith at the top of the show. The hockey team is three, six, and four so far on the season. And here's what coach Smith had to say to Mary Kessler about it all. All right guys, hi, I'm Mary and I'm here with coach Dave Smith. So, uh, Mr. Smith, what are, uh, what can you say are your strengths so far? You know, we've got great depth, we've got great size and we can skate very well. Very awesome, awesome. And uh, uh, so far for the season, have the, has the team met their expectations so far? You know, we, we're a very young team. Um, we gained a lot of experience last year. I would say a third of the way into the season. We're, we're seeing what the future looks like. We're able to generate a lot of chances. We're keeping the puck out of our net. And uh, those are things that we want to build on as we move forward. Very nice, very nice. And uh, who, who are your key players? Uh, Kyle, uh, Kyle Gibbons, Tony Capobianco, Ben Danford, Taylor Law. Very nice, a very strong team. All right, so you just recently played at RIT, um, and you know that that game was very highly, highly anticipated, and you guys played very well, six to three. We uh, we controlled a lot of the play. The power play was very good, and uh, you know when the game was on the line, we had some some clutch play by Pat Sullivan. Very nice. All right, and just this past Friday, we had the Battle of the Bridge against Niagara. Uh, the Griffs may not have you know come out on top, but uh, what, were you satisfied with the team's performance overall? Well, we want to win and we're measured by winning, but uh, we played very well. We outshot them 33-21. We controlled tempo and controlled the play. They just, their goalie stood in his head and we weren't able to, to get another one by him. What kind of skills do you guys practice on in our practices, both offensively and defensively? Well, really everything. I mean, it revolves around skating passing, shooting, um, but first and foremost we have to compete. You have to practice at competing. So that's what we just finished today. It was a lot of competition stuff. Very nice. And uh, has the team been consistent in applying what they learn in practice to when they hit the ice for games and everything? Yeah, absolutely. That starts with our captains, Tori Lindsay and Preston Shoup, two great leaders that share our message in the locker room when the coaches aren't around. So they've uh, very much carried out the vision and the, and the things that we've been practicing. Very nice, very nice. And uh, it's, it's right now Movember. Um, ha is everybody kind of participating in that? And is that something that the whole team is adamant about? Or is it just kind of individual players who are very outspoken about it? You know, I think the whole team is doing it to the best of my knowledge. Some guys you can't see it as well as the others. Yeah. But uh, I think it's a, it's a great cause. It's a, you know, prostate cancer awareness. It's um, an outstanding message. And then the guys get to see how much, uh, how much of their mustache can grow in in a month as well. Anything else you would like to add about the team that I didn't ask you about? Uh, no, we got great guys. We'd love to see all the fans out of the games, and anytime we can get on Griff's TV, that's awesome. Since that interview with Coach Smith, the 
team won once and tied once against AIC at Buffalo State Sports Arena. In the win, senior Tori Lindsay, junior Kyle Gibbons, and sophomores Doug Beck and Matthew Grayson each netted goals. That was on Sunday, and junior Tony Capobianco stopped 30 shots in goal to anchor the Griff's defense. Now that we're all caught up on everything that's happened in the sports world, let's take a look at what's up and coming for your Griffin, Golden Griffin teams. Men's basketball takes on the University of Maryland, Baltimore County on Thursday in Baltimore. And the women's basketball team competes Saturday at Akron. Hockey has a doubleheader against Connecticut Friday and Saturday nights in Connecticut. And finally, swimming and diving will compete Sunday against Binghamton at the CAC and then Tuesday against Cleveland State in Cleveland. Well, that's it in the sports world. Back to you, Dave. Thanks, Brendan and Kyle. Our very own Griffin TV sports team will be producing a new half-hour show that will be airing sometime next week. Stay tuned to find out more. Next, we're going to find out about what the Quidditch Club is all about and some important upcoming events. But first, a quick commercial break. Make sure you stick around. <laughs> Cause tonight we're sitting around the table The holiday when we're able uh -oh, To raise a coat and a celebration Telling stories of the days when these friends were all that we could see And now our faces gather once again to light the tree Cause we know this Christmas we here at Griffin TV like to showcase some of the numerous clubs that Canisius has to offer. One of the more unique clubs on campus is Quidditch Club. Griffin TV reporter Robert Crunin has more on what Quidditch Club is and what they do. Hello, this is Robert Creedon here for Griffin TV, and today I am here at the Regis North room in the Student Center, where the Harry Potter Quidditch Club is hosting one of their movie nights, where they are screening Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I got to interview some of the club officers to find out what exactly the Harry Potter Quidditch Club is all about. Uh, I'm Mike Burrow. I'm Hannah Burry. I'm Allie McCourt. We're the e-board of the Quidditch team. Half of us. The Quidditch Club first organized last year, and this is its first official year as a school club. Um, we actually didn't start it. Last year it was kind of formed, and due to some difficulties we experienced uh, getting things going, it wasn't really able to take off last year. Yeah, within two months this year we've done double what they did last year. We were just trying to get the club off the ground, get people interested in playing Quidditch. If you've seen any of the Quidditch scenes in any of the Harry Potter movies, you pretty much already know what Quidditch is all about. Uh, the game of Quidditch is very similar to what you would see in the Harry Potter movies. You have seven players. You have a seeker who chases the snitch. The snitch is a person who's dressed up in yellow, and they run around with a tennis ball shoved into a sock that's tucked into their waistband. And you have to pull the, the sock to, to catch the snitch. Then you have uh, chasers who play with the quaffle, and they score goals. And then you have beaters. They throw uh, bludgers, which are dodgeballs in this case, at each other to knock them off the brooms. And finally, have you, you have the keeper, who is the goalie for the hoops. Um, it's full contact. You're allowed to stiff arm, shove, tackle, um, w with some exceptions, but it's a, it's a pretty physical sport. Aside from playing Quidditch, the Harry Potter Club organizes various other hot Harry Potter themed events. Um, we're having a headless hunt, which is um, our Halloween party. It's a little late, but we've had trouble booking a room. But it'll be in Regis North. There'll be free pizza, games. If you come and you win the game, which is collecting heads, quote unquote, you win a $15 Tim card. So come and play and eat and hang out. There's the Yule Ball. We have the Yule Ball. We actually have it scheduled for um, February 2nd. It's going to be a formal ball. There's going to be free food, music, obviously dancing, I hope. 
people don't call. Um, it's gonna be formal. There's gonna be pictures with our, um, hopefully with our Harry Potter cutouts of Dan, Rupert, and Emma on the red carpet when you walk into the ball. That'll be fun. Oh, and we have our Relay for Life. Oh yeah, we're doing the Relay for Life. Um, at some, yeah, Relay for Life will be doing And that. at the ball we are selling roses for a dollar, or not roses, carnations. For a dollar. For a dollar, for our Relay for Life fund. Even though this is the club's first official year, the Quidditch Club hopes to play other schools who have Quidditch teams. We're hoping once we have a more uh, secure and stable group of people that'll play, we'll be able to actually go out and challenge teams. Uh, Quidditch practice, as of right now, we're really hoping to get people interested, so it's more of just a pickup game. Uh, we play in the quad at around 5.30 on Tuesday. You show up, we hand you a broom, we kind of, we go over the rules a little bit so everyone knows what's happening. Uh, we split off in the sides and play. Down the road, we would like to actually start developing practices where we can work on becoming a more cohesive unit so that we can competitively play. I'm like the opposite of athletic, and I have a blast doing it. Um, and when you get tired, someone's usually willing to like switch off and you can be keeper, which doesn't involve much running. It's more just like good hand-eye coordination kind of stuff. It's, it's a blast. The members of the Quidditch Club are organized by the traditional sorting head system as seen in the Harry Potter movies. We did sort people at the first meeting. Everyone had to take a quiz when they walked in, and you were graded and put into a house. And we had a hat and sorted people. There is also a House Cup award at the end of the year to the house with the most points. And so, as of yet, we have different ways that we're tracking points. Yeah. Uh, attendance at Quidditch practice and meetings uh, count towards adding points. Um, we have a sign-in sheet in the library to uh, kind of promote studying. When you sign in, uh, you gain points for your house that way. And I think that's been been getting some names on it, so we, we're hoping that'll pick up as, uh, as the year goes on. One of the club's more ambitious plans is to conduct a Triwizard Tournament type event. So it'd be a quad wizard tournament, and it would hopefully be followed by a um, end of year feast, quote unquote, in the quad where we hopefully grill out and have a lot of blast, have a lot of blast, have a lot of fun. Although it's the club's first year, they have plenty of plans for their future. Ideally, in the next couple years, we'd like to take a group of Quidditch players up to the Quidditch World Cup, wherever it is. Um, we wouldn't play, we'd watch, but that'd be, um, it's in New York this year, New York City? Uh, New York was last year. Oh, this year, I think it's in either Florida or California. Um, and who knows, maybe down the road we'll be able to attend one of the regional qualifying events, uh, play there, and maybe even make it to the World Cup. Yeah. Um, probably not this year, um, or maybe even the next, as we'll still be establishing ourselves as a team. But um, <coughs> within the next couple years, we're hoping to be uh, at least on the map competitively. If you're interested in joining the Harry Potter Quidditch Club, just contact one of the officers or come by a club meeting. Well, that's all for me here from the Regis North. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Robert. And now it's time to get an update on Canisius news and events. Celebrate the holidays at Christmas in the Quad. Held on Thursday, November 29th at 7 o'clock p.m., there will be cookie decorating, pictures with Santa, holiday karaoke, games, and crafts. There will also be an annual blessing and dedication of the Christmas tree. Tree lighting will take place in the Bart Mitchell Quad. The party following the lighting will be held in Penfold Commons. CPLD will be hosting another evening Battle Royale tournament Night, come play and compete in ping pong and pool tournaments. There will also be other games and free food. Prizes will be awarded throughout the night. This takes place on Saturday, December 1st at 11 o'clock p.m. The Canisius College a cappella group, The Crescent Don'ts, will be holding their final holiday concert. It will be held on Sunday, December 2nd at 2 o'clock p.m. in Palisano Pavilion. Canisius College and G Squad present Breaking the Floor, their annual step competition. This will take place on Sunday, December 2nd in the Montanti Cultural Center. General admission is $5, but $2 with a valid Canisius College ID. With all the changes in technology lately, come find out about the new technology today. Learn the, to use the newly designed Windows 8 software. This event, hosted by Alpha Kappa Psi, will take place in Old Main in room 203 at 5 p.m. on Friday, November 30th at 5 p.m. Pizza and refreshments will be served following the presentation. 
Well, that does it for another episode of Griffin TV. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and check us out on YouTube. You can always watch our, catch our episodes at 11 p.m., 5 p.m., and 10 p.m. on weekdays, with new episodes airing at 5 p.m. on Wednesdays. From all of us here at Griffin TV, have a great week, Canisius. Thank you.